All right, so this is how it starts. This is the track I use. I've told this many times on Instagram, be very careful when you buy this stuff. Um, this one here is from Bighorn and a company called Orange Aluminum uh, in Orange County sells it for really cheap and ships it. Um, a lot of them don't fit T-bolts or they don't fit the, uh, not T-bolts, but the Festool type uh, clamps, Bessie Festool type clamps. So be very careful. The inside diameter here has to be a certain size. If you go to orangealuminum.com and look at their T-track, they give you those measurements. So if you can't get it where you're at, at least you know what measurements you need. So I have traced this out and that's where the magnetic tape goes. That's where the track goes. And I got to recess this in with the router bit. I was very careful when I built this that I did not put any fasteners in these areas all the way down. So when I route it out, I don't have to worry about hitting anything. Um, both of these right here have to be pretty damn precise when you route them in because obviously when the stop block slides over it, you don't want it to get caught up. And you can see I got to go down about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to set my router up right now to route that in and route that in and uh, get this in clean and then I'll start on the stop block. All right, when doing this, I like to use the Makita router just because I have a pig plate for it. And it gives me that perfect long reference point that I can clamp my Festool track down and uh, ride this along the side of it. I know I have the uh, 1400 router with the track guide, but this one's more compact and it's easier for stuff like that. Um, this is the brass pilot bit from Bits and Bits. Fantastic bit. I'm actually gonna swap this out right now and put it on uh, probably the Milwaukee router because I need to uh, round over a lot of the pieces. They don't need to be on that tight. I don't know why it's on that tight. And then I'm gonna put on a three quarter inch Astra coated bit. Uh, this thing's an animal. I've hit nails with this and everything and it's still trooping along. Uh, I think that's one of the first bits I got from them and it still works really good. So. Let me dial this thing in. Now there's a ton of ways to do this, but one way that I found out that works really good for me is I use my combination square, set it loosely, and I'll set it against the edge of my router, and I'll spin the bit from the side of the router that I need, and I'll just make sure it's not even touched, just right there. Rotate your bit, and that'll give you your exact offset off the combination square. Instead of trying to measure to the bit, um, whatever your, your way of usually doing it, I like to use this and then spin the bit and you can judge right off of that. And then once you get that, cut yourself a piece, that exact width on your table saw, and then cut yourself two spacer blocks and you're gonna use those to space your track off the line you need to cut. Uh, always unplug my tools when I go home, because I'm crazy. Okay, so now you have these two even spacer blocks and that's my line that I need. And I'll make sure that my track here is right up to that line. And I have one on the other side too. And if you don't have a Festool track, just join a long board or um, if you have aluminum um, extrusion or anything will work as long as it's straight. Lock down my clamp. Make sure we're solid and follow that all the way down. Now in the first set of wings I did, it was really easy because I did all the pieces at the same time, this and the shorter wings. But now that I built the second set, obviously it's a little bit more complicated because now I have to match what's there because I'm not doing it at the exact same time. So what I'm doing is this is a piece of cut off from the original. And here's the new track from uh, that I just bought for the new wings. I'm setting that on to span the track and then I'm using my pig plate and I'm dropping the bit to just touch the recessed track. Now I'm gonna do a little sample run real quick, make sure it fits the same height and then we're good to go. Battery's dead. All right, 
Let's try this again. Third time's a charm. How about dust collection? All right, so the Makita router is not known for its great dust collection on the plunge base. Um, sorry, I have the vacuum running, but it's just too big of an opening, so it just doesn't catch anything. I mean, it's better than nothing, but it sucks. But my man Darren made the dust dome, and that modifies this to where it traps a ton more dust. This is actually gonna be my first time using it, um, but he's shown it several times, and a couple other people have shown it, but. Let's see what it does on mine, but I have high hopes. All of his other stuff works great. The amount of airflow difference is insane, guys. show your mistakes I set my bit from the back of the router and the distance from the bit to the back of the router is about an eighth inch difference from the bit to the front of the router uh, on the base plate so when I went to go hook up the dust collection I hooked it up and then I flipped the router around and I made the groove wider now with that being said it's my miter saw wing so not a $10,000 table, but that shows you how easy mistakes can happen. Then, <laughs> my hose, when I went to go do the second pass, got caught on that clamp that I was hesitant to put on in the first place, and I did this little dip. So, not the end of the world, I'll wax fill it, just to make myself feel better, but it is what it is. Those are the mistakes that happen though. Now, as much as that pissed me off, the good news is, We're dead on on height, so it will uh, cruise over that no problem. Just gap, small gap. I mean, it's really small. Um, it just sucks. So be careful of that, guys. Uh, I'm going to route in the magnet now. Let's see if I screw that up. Okay, routing the slot for the magnetic tape was a lot less eventful. In other words, it went good. This slot is an inch wide, actually an inch and a sixteenth. The tape's an inch wide. Little trick. Uh, there's several ways to do this, guys, but it's just one little trick. I had my spacer block set up for the track, right? That's the beginning of my slot. And my track came right to that, and I clamped it down. I knew I needed to go another quarter inch, so I put a quarter inch tick mark. And then after I wrote, route, uh, routed that first groove then i just slid that tick mark over to the groove just clamped the track to there and then that gave me my extra perfect quarter inch so i just did the offset on that block if that makes sense okay guys i lined it up with the original wing the slots line up perfectly that break i brought this up on instagram before like two weeks after i did the wings um something fell on my saw and the job site so cracked the laminate right there but whatever um lines up perfectly depths are good this one here is an eighth inch too wide but not a big deal um, i like to run a row of fast cap speed tape in the grooves the magnetic tape does have adhesive already on the back of it but that's extra protection and there's joints you can get the tape in longer links on amazon matter of fact i did that with my makita wings over there and it works great but my supplier up the street dixie line actually carries this and i like buying locally when i can so if i need more of it i can just run up the street and grab it and the joint on my second set of wings never moved when I use the fast cap speed tape. I'll put a link to it at the end of the video, but the stuff's awesome. I use it all the time. Um, so I'm going to run up to, I did screw up though. Uh, I already had a roll here. At least I thought I had a full roll here, but you can see I used some of it. So I'm a little bit short. So I'm going to run up to Dixie line real quick, grab another roll. It's like three bucks and uh, grab a quarter inch carriage bolt. Cause I'm giving this one to, um, trimmed out on Instagram. He asked me for this one if I was going to make a new one. So I'm going to grab another bolt and uh, be right back. 
All right, I gotta remain focused and buy what I came here to buy, nothing else. focused all right so i'm back got an extra tape now but before i continue these rolled tacos were running their mouth on the way over here so they must be punished then i'll get back to work all right guys so i'm gonna attach the track now i'm gonna have a cut at the very end this is aluminum so you could just cut it with any miter saw blade pretty much multiple tooth what uh i'm gonna do though is stick down the first two long pieces and then cut the third piece. When I attach these, I use these type screws, number eight, seven, sixteenths with a uh, round washer head. The washer head is slightly bigger than the opening at the top of the T-track. But as long as you worm your, your uh, drill, it'll, it'll go in there. But I like that the flat bottom pulls this thing tight down and I've never had any problems. It puts a little tiny ding on the center part of the track, but it, it sticks better in my opinion. So make sure your wings all the way back. Pull up the speed tape. And because of the groove, I know my groove's off, but it's only off in width. It's still straight because of that. I know I could just slam it to the back of this dado. And with that glue in there, that's fast cap speed tape. It holds it for me. And that allows me to drill it down. So I'm gonna stick it down and it won't move on me. And now I can go back and screw it off You can see it holds already with just that double-sided tape, which is pretty good. And then you could just come by and screw these and I'll show you that. So like I said, these are slightly bigger in diameter than the top opening of this, but you'll see when you put them on there, you just gotta worm them in there and they'll just barely nick that. It will not interfere with the T-bolt. I've been using this stuff for years. And uh, these just seem to hold the best. They're 7 16 in length. So with the thickness of the laminate and the, uh, the aluminum on the track, it doesn't poke out the bottom, but it gets right there. And just work your way down. I bought three pieces of the track, which I'm still gonna use the third piece on the track that I wanna route into the other wing. But my scrap piece is actually long enough so I didn't peel this tape up yet. So I like to butt that on there. Mark it with the razor blade. And then cut it with the radial arm saw. Perfect time to run the radial arm saw because Queen is on and I cannot stand Queen. Last time I brought up how much I hated Queen, I got a bunch of flack from all you Queen fans. I just don't understand. I'm new to the uh, rock and roll genre. It's not what I grew up on. I'm not new to it, but new to paying attention to it. And I just don't understand how that's even considered any form of rock. Uh, it's bad opera music, but don't unfollow me yet. Now the magnet's a lot easier guys. And just for those that have never used this stuff before, you can just cut it with a razor blade. Um, what I like to do, just like when I'm doing edge banding, is try to help take the curve out of it before you stick it down. And what I mean by that is it comes from the factory curved, you know, to fit in there. So lay it down on something, pull it flat to try to take some of that natural 
curved so it doesn't want to pull up off of the tape. After a while, that tape, a couple days, it'll uh, actually get a stronger bond. But this does help significantly. I do the same thing with edge tape. Unless I run it through an edge bander, then you really don't have a way around that. But if you're ironing it on, then uh, do the same thing. Trying to get my knife underneath that. Speed tape. And like I said, it already has an adhesive back, but you know, you, you can't be, you can't add more, you know, it, it, the, the extra from the fast cap speed tape helps significantly. And again, if you have any other questions about this process, I did a bunch of build videos on the, on my Instagram page with the original set of wings that still attach to this. This is just kind of a redoing everything I've already done. And for those that haven't seen it kind of show a little bit, maybe you missed something in the, maybe I missed something on the first video. So this kind of gives you a rundown of how to do it. All right. Like I said, guys, it's super easy to cut this magnetic tape. There's no special tools required or anything like that. And then what I like to do is on this metal edging so you don't hurt yourself, walking by. That way when you walk by, it doesn't get caught on your clothes or anything like that. And that's it. All right, guys, full credit to Insider Carpentry on this magnetic trick. That's where I learned it from. I've done it on my last like three sets of wings and uh, it's genius. It works great. It makes recalibration real easy. Um, here's the steel tape. I just took off the Makita over there. And the sheer strength that the tape holds. A lot of times people ask if the tape moves. It, it does not move. It does not move at all. Um, it's just the sheer strength of the magnet holding it down, you, you can't, you can't move it until you pull it up. And then when you want to recalibrate it, you matter of fact, if it's all the way on there and you try to yank it, I can't even pull it. So you have to pull some of it up if you want to recalibrate so you can get enough of the, to move it. But when it's all stuck down, there's no way you can move it. It's, it's extremely strong. So there's that. Um, the old stop block that I'm going to give to trimmed out will fit on this because my new one's going to be the same. So I'll show you guys how that looks. All right, so I threw on my original stop block. You can see how it slides. The laminate keeps it from uh, getting caught up or rubbing hard. The bottom of this is uh, high pressure laminate, so is the surface top here. So it slides really well. And then when you wanna lock it, it does not move. So now I just gotta build the exact same thing, just a little bit wider. Okay, again, guys, I know I've said this a bunch of times, but just so everybody understands. This block is perfect. I'm only gonna make it wider. I could have salvaged this, but like I said, I'm gonna hook my boy up on Instagram here with it. So this portion of the block can actually stay the same too. Um, the hinge mounting locations, everything can stay the same. I'm just gonna make the actual stop block wider. So right now this thing is nine and seven eighths. I'm gonna bump it up to probably 12 and a half, 12, just to get that little bit more width for really large miters. This will do 90% of casings that you're going to run into but like i said i do a lot of furniture stuff and a lot of little crazy projects so i want to get a little bit more width out of it but we're going to basically copy this i'm going to make this portion the same i'm just going to widen this portion so unfortunately i think this is going to become a two-part video i spent the last 30 minutes trying to find this pre-laminated piece of baltic core three-quarter i had that i make the fences out of and I think when I cleaned up the shop, we threw it away. <laughs> so it ain't the end of the world. Um, it sucks, but I do have this one inch thick Baltic core uh, with a paper back and walnut front. You can see I've used it for jigs before, but most of it's really good um, and it's flat. So I might make the fence out of this. I'll probably, probably do a couple cuts right now and then cut this video short and then we'll do a part two. Uh, when I get around to it. 
Um, that's all done and that's a pain. So let me mess with this for a minute, but the UFC is on tonight and I got to get home. So um, I'm going to spend about an hour, see how far I can get. Together, this is just being used for support. I'm gonna overhang this top portion, which is this portion here, just slightly, and then I'm gonna route it flush. But I'm gonna put some uh, 23 gauge pins in it just to keep it uh, from sliding around. And this speed set glue from Tycon that I always talk about will allow me to uh, keep moving this project forward, not having to wait for a dry time. You got to be real smart about where you put your nails because remember you're going to be screwing and doing all kinds of other things obviously i have a template here which helps me out significantly but just don't go all ham with your nails without thinking about it so now i can go by and route this flush with this one so they're dead smooth with each other All right, guys, my uh, phone was about to die, so I had to unplug the microphone, so my voice might be a little bit lower. But So these 270-degree Hayfla hinges do not use the full uh, 1 and 3 8 or 35 millimeter cup hole. Um, so what I do is, at my house, it's easy. I have a, a really nice drill press that makes drilling these out really easy. Here at the shop, I usually order my doors pre-drilled when I order them, or when I make them, I usually make them at home because that's where my bigger bits and everything are at. But I do have this portable drill jig from Euro, uh, Euro jig, uh, Euro drill, I'm sorry. Um, I'll put a link if I can find it at the end of the video. They, uh, but I don't want to mess with it because right now it's offset perfectly for uh, bloom hinges. So what I do is I rip spacers and just use the double-sided fast cap speed tape to give me that offset. So now my center line to those holes, I, dry, I drill a line and I line this jig up and then I can drill them. So then you end up with that perfect half hole for those type of hinges.
We'll board the other one and I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right, I still got a lot of dados to do on the bottom of this, but as I go, I'll usually use a, uh, a 1 16th round over bit just to break the edges. Make them nice and smooth. You don't gotta worry about getting a splinter. So this piece is gonna slide underneath this piece. It's gonna get cut narrower and I'll show you why, but I don't wanna cut it yet. I don't wanna cut it till it's all built. That way I know exactly where to cut it. But for the time being, there needs to be a dado at the bottom of this one and the top of this one so the track can ride freely between the two. size and there's enough lip showing there where the t-bolt you want to make it the thickness the depth of the track plus the bottom of the t-bolt and I'll show you why in a minute when I put in two t-bolts I want to be able to tighten one up and not hit this track so that's why it's a little bit deeper that'll make sense a little bit now the next groove is gonna be a quarter inch over and that's gonna be for the guide the permanent mounted guide and the measuring strip. I have a three quarter stack on here, so I'm going to do two cuts on both pieces. My uh, phone's still charging, so I can't run the mic yet, but here's what we end up with. So my bottom and my top are the exact same length. Cut them at the exact same time. The only difference is now I'm going to remove the thickness of one of these, which is an inch, uh, from the bottom one. And the reason that is, is when I push this in, the it'll make more sense when it's built, but the gauge is going to read from the bottom back. So if I want a six inch offset, I slide the bottom over until six lines up with this side. The front's not as important, and I'll show you why. On what I learned with doing these stop blocks is you can see the front here, I add this piece that'll go all the way against the behind the fence so pieces can't slide behind it. So pieces can't slide behind it, but I wanna be able to remove this so this narrower section can slide all the way to the blade. It'll make more sense when I, when I uh, do it but just to show you guys so right now i'm going to cut this one inch shorter along with this and then i'm going to glue this strip in and it'll hopefully make sense i typically keep these auxiliary fences on so i'm going to measure with these on so i haven't screwed anything down yet here's this, uh, the mounting base i'm going to install this on there nothing's attached yet you can see i'm just going to set it all together as it sits, and I'm gonna butt it tight, make sure, slide this over, and then I'm gonna mark this bottom one to where I'm gonna cut just the bottom one. Once I put that side filler on, that'll give me my full width, but when I take that off, I wanna be able to slide this bottom over to the blade. So there's my mark that I need to cut off on the table saw. 
Okay, I ran it through the table saw. You can see this part will slide all the way over. So I can use this to cut little tiny pieces against the saw. Nothing's glued or screwed yet, so it's all over the place, but bear with me, let's go put it together. Okay, before somebody asks, they do sell this in one inch wide widths. I think all the way up to six inch wide width. Um, unfortunately, I don't know where my one inch speed tape is, so we're gonna use the two inch. and just cut it down real quick. I hate wasting this stuff, but it'll take me longer to try to find my other one then. I'm pre-putting this on, and you guys will see in a second why. Now that I got that on, we're gonna permanently glue it in this bottom slot speed tape up and then to keep it from sliding around I think this thing's running out of gas I got enough in there. Okay. Put that set up for a quick second. Okay. I'll let that set up for like five minutes. That this speed set stuff's crazy. It dries really fast. Now, remember, I'm gonna register that way. So now my metal ruler. That's what determined this ruler determined how big I was gonna make that dado. What matters the most is it's flush on this side. Sits like that. Sits like that, nice and flush. And then when you slide it out, that'll give me my gauge mark on this side. And I just gotta put in this metal track and drill the through holes. Okay, I carefully marked the center of here in an inch and a half in. And that inch and a half in is gonna make sure I don't collide with this back knob for height adjustment or with any of the hinges. But you have to be center to make it slide properly. Okay. Now I just gotta attach that track in the bottom. Let me cut that real quick. Okay, fits in there nice. So let's get it on. I'm gonna use the VIX bit, that way it doesn't walk around on me. You don't gotta go deep, because you start it so it doesn't walk on you. Matter of fact, let me throw a piece of tape in there too, just to be safe. The difference this tape makes, I can't even explain it guys, it's huge. The shit will walk all over the place on you when you're gonna go put it in. these a little bit bigger I like these little rockler knobs you can get cheap knobs on Amazon and everything but the rockler ones have little rubber grips and they hold it. This is obviously going to be set back. Sorry. That'll be set back to accept that. Then you have a block. With an accurate rule coming out the backside. 
Let me attach it to that, so it'll make more sense. All right, guys, everything fits good. Slides good. Locks. Locks up, it's behind the fence line. I just have to attach this front part, sand it, and put the leveling bolt. I am missing one screw. I'm gonna put in a threaded insert on the end here, uh, 3 8 threaded insert, 5 16 threaded insert, so I can use a uh, quarter 20 machine head screw to keep this front piece on. That way, no matter how many times I pop it on and off, it's not gonna get worn out. If you use a regular screw, you're just gonna keep stripping threads and eventually I won't wanna, you won't have no meat up there. So I'm gonna do a threaded insert. I do have the carriage bolts. So I'm gonna do that real quick before I go. Sand this, but other than that, uh, everything looks really good. You can see the offset now. So if you want an exactly a five, five inch offset, just set that to five inches. Tighten it up and your molding will come underneath. But I got to put the leveler on here so that way I can raise it and lower it. There's no rocket science to this. The only reason why I waited till now to do it is I wanted to make sure everything slid. It wasn't going to interfere with anything because this is the knob I use. So you don't want this knob to collide with that knob, hit the hinge. So now knowing that I'm good, right there is a good spot basically, right? There's no, there's no science to it here, guys. This part's really easy. Do a little mark. Try not to drill into your cable. And then from the bottom side, I use these threaded inserts, seven millimeter. I like these ones. Um, I bought the ones that comes with the little screwdriver or a drill attachment to help you put them in. And I've broken several of those. These ones here, I haven't, haven't been able to break yet. Let me move this out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Now I have a permanent threaded attachment. Quarter 20 bolt. And then up here, I'll put on a nut first. That way this won't overspin and then I can get a wrench and tighten that to the knob all right now it lifts on its own There you go. Just gotta put that on and we're done. All right guys, when you do this, last thing here, obviously the machine, the machine threaded insert and the screw here have to line up perfectly. So the only way you can really do that is to mark them at the exact same time. So what I'm gonna do is get some blue tape. Put some blue tape. A little stab of the tight bond CA glue. And then stick it on there. Now I can drill through this one with a pilot bit, scar that one, pull off the tape, and there's no damage to either piece. Now, just barely start it.
Now we have a perfectly lined up hole. I just gotta countersink that, and that'll line up perfectly with that, and I can remove it as many times as I want to. Here's a little trick uh, a lot of people might not know. So I had a quarter inch hole. You guys remember I drilled through. This is the backside. How do you make a bigger hole on top without doing a template? One of the tricks is one of the metal, you guys, you see electricians use for boring out boxes. These things work really well in wood. And what I mean by that is see that hole there, step bit. Look how fast they cut. They give you a perfect hole that's centered to the hole you already drilled. So what I'll do is I'll drill down just to get the top part, I need it to be a flat bottom, but just to get the top part wide enough to take one of my bigger bits. So I'll bore down till I get to that diameter, basically. There we go. Let's see if that's big enough for this head here. Uh, let me go one more bigger. Just to be safe. So I'll bore that out. Throw on my half inch bit. Now I don't have to worry about that walking on me. Go backwards. I'm not gonna drill into my hand, the bit's going backwards. Just give me a flat bottom there. Let that boy can sit in. Now, there you go. It's perfectly flush. And I can take that off as many times as I want and not worrying about stripping that out. All right, guys, real quick before I go, this is gonna be a part one. I still gotta do the little plastic cursor, sand it, uh, wax, wax the rail portions and all that so it slides really smooth. but. This is, you guys get the gist of it. I mean, obviously, it's pretty self-explanatory at this point. So, slides good. Locks good. Lifts up. You can see when you want to do your offsets. Let me make sure you guys can see it. And then the reason we bored this deeper before was now I can tighten this up when this one's not being used and it won't collide with that one. See, I can slide right past it. Same difference goes for this side. When I, so now I can slide, do my offsets, there's my ruler. And when I slide up to the saw fence, you can see here when I go up to the fence, this won't go past the fence. So that's why I did what I did. I can lift this up. Sorry. Pop this bad boy off that we just put on. Slide this up. And this here now can slide all the way up to the blade for smaller cuts. I just have to, it's not attached to this one. This would be if I uh, obviously have to. That's why there's two knobs. I'm sure you guys already understood that, but just in case you didn't, this knob here is for when I slide up to To the saw I can tighten it on that one right that one's not going to be used as much as the other one but you can see that's what that one's for so you got to do multiple three inch cuts you can set that up and there's your stop for there hopefully that all makes sense guys sorry for the long video I'm trying to get better at this but with the mic issues and sound issues and yada yada lighting issues and all the other shit bear with me but uh, this will be part one. Uh, part two will just be showing it all sanded, cleared, looking pretty until I screw it all up.